the Urban Cycling Survival Guide because I wanted to help people figure out how to ride more safely in cities across North America. There's a lot of people that want to try it, but they're not sure where to begin. Maybe they haven't been on a bike since they were a kid or a teenager, and now they want to use it for transportation. Uh, so it kind of answers all those questions, and it allows people to feel confident, really. I was, I was aiming to build people's confidence. There's a lot of people that are interested but concerned, and this is a good starting point. I got involved in cycling uh, on the back of my dad's bike as a baby, <laughs> as a kid. But I was always on my bike uh, as a kid, as a teenager, I grew up on the Taylor Creek Park, so I was always in Taylor Creek and in the Don Valley along the waterfront. And then I started commuting to high school, so bikes just kind of always been part of how I, one of the ways I get around, I guess. And um, in terms of advocacy, uh, when I first moved back to Toronto, I um, I was I started working in the market, and uh, you saw a friend of mine earlier. She was carrying cones, pylons on her on her bike. Um, she and I are two of the people that helped to start uh, pedestrian center in Kensington, but we were part of a bike gang. And we were sort of pro-bikes and anti-car. And then Bike Union came along, and I volunteered again to help out with that, and ended up being hired as the first uh, executive director of what is now called Cycle Toronto. Uh, so it was, it was my job to work in cycling advocacy. You know, I think to get into cycling, you can start by finding a friend who already does it. Right? Start with a friend, read my book, you know, build your confidence, learn what you need to know about the rules and how to deal with different scenarios. But then try it on a weekend. If you have bike share in your city, you can borrow a bike, go out with a friend, make sure you figure out, find the, the city the city's cycling map that shows where the bike routes are. And just give it a try when you're not in a hurry to get to work or to some event, right? Just go for a nice ride with a friend, get the feel for it. Um, and then if you want to start uh, riding to work, for example, or school, um, again, you want to be, you want to find the right bike for you, so figure out what feels right. And then, you know, plan your route, get all your, your gear, be a lock, lights, um, a good lock, lights and a bike, and maybe a back rack so you can put your bag on the back, you don't have to get a sweaty back when you're riding. Um, plan your route and, and give it a go. I mean, uh, people over 50 are all, are all a bit different. Some 50 year olds are more spry than some 45 year olds and you know, it, it, all, it all depends on you physically and how you're doing. But we've got lots of great uh, options for people that are, you know, maybe your knees aren't as good as they used to be, uh, maybe your balance is starting to get a little weird. Um, so we've got things like adult tricycles. They're fantastic. I'm seeing way more of them now. You get all your groceries in the back, nice and stable, super comfortable. Um, and we've got things like electric assist. So a regular bicycle, but that has um, an electric or like a battery on it and a, and a component that helps give you a little power on your wheel. Cities are can be hazardous places. They're busy. There's people coming from all directions. We've got these contested shared spaces that aren't necessarily as well adapted as they could be but we're working towards that. Cities across North America are in transition and being adapted to the way people, the ways that people want to move. Um, so, I mean, really it's about being vigilant, always being vigilant about your surroundings. On a bike, there's never any time for daydreaming, except maybe if you're on the islands in Toronto here and you've got, you know, a nice clear path with no motor vehicles around. Even then, if you're on a shared path, you've always got to be aware of, of other pedestrians and dogs and kids. And, right, so it's a shared environment where one must be constantly vigilant. Um, but there's also ways to address things like that. So riding one meter away, as close to one meter away from a car door zone, right? So the swing range of a door, either passenger or a driver door. Even when a bike lane is in place, if that bike lane runs alongside parked cars, you're still sometimes riding in the door zone. So you can't, you can't let your guard down just because you're using bike infrastructure. I guess the more predictably that you ride and the more you communicate with others around you, the safer you'll be and the, the more you'll reduce risk. We've got more parents and kids riding, we've got more seniors riding, we've got more women riding because we're adapting our city streets to make it safe for them to choose that option. And it's amazing. 